What's up, guys? Your boy Swills here, and today I'm bringing you more Falcons content. I'm going to tell you why the Falcons are bad, why they have been in this situation. A lot of Falcons fans are saying, oh, get rid of Matt Ryan, or cut this guy, or cut this guy, or why are we so bad, draft a quarterback, all this and that. I'm going to tell you why we're in the crappy situation that we're in and how we're going to get out of it, right? That's the thing. This team lacks talent all around. The biggest reason why, I can tell you why, I've got it on my computer right here, is the complete lack of talent drafted, right? So we go all the way back to 2008 when Thomas Dimitrov was selected as our general manager, and that's the Matt Ryan pick. Probably the best pick our franchise has made in terms of a superstar caliber franchise changer. Matt Ryan is a Hall of Famer. Um, you would expect a good quarterback with a top three pick, but he's lived up to that for sure. Outside of him, the draft class was not that good, right? You know, Sam Baker wasn't good. Curtis Lawson was all right. Harry Douglas was all right. A lot of math picks, but no other great players around him. <clears throat> around him. 2009, no good players. First round pick, Perry Jerry is a bust. No good picks outside of that. Not even decent depth players besides maybe William Moore. 2010, Sean Weatherspoon, injury problems. Uh, Corey Peters was bad. I mean, another bad draft class. So it's three straight bad draft classes, pretty much, outside of Matt Ryan. It's just depth pieces. There's there's not other, and no other bona fide starters yet that we've drafted. 2011, Julio Jones, probably the greatest trade for a draft pick our franchise has ever made. He's he's amazing. Dude. I can't say anything less about Julio Jones. Outside of that, draft class was bad. 2012, the entire draft class was bad. 2013 was okay. Trufant and Alfred taken in the first two rounds. In the beginning of their careers, they were great. Kind of peaked. You know, Trufant was hurt for the Super Bowl, I believe. But Robert Alfred, pick six against the Patriots. Highest moment in Falcons history. We all thought we were going to win the Super Bowl there. It's a subpar. It's, a, it's, a, it's an average draft class. It wasn't terrible. It wasn't great. 2014, Jake Matthews, Devontae Freeman, Ricardo Allen in the fifth. I mean, that's a good draft class. I'd say 2014 was a good draft class. We got three starting caliber players out of that draft class, right? Three pro bowlers, pretty much, you could say. Or borderline pro bowlers, at least. 2015, things are a little sketchy. Grady Jarrett in the fifth, huge pickup. Probably the best value pick we've made in franchise history in a draft. Um, Vic Beasley was not good. Um, Jalen Collins, personal issues. Tevin Collins was a good number two. Um... I'd say that's a decent draft class, all things considered. I think that's a decent draft class, although you wish you would hit better on your number one overall picks. 2016, best draft class we've had. Keanu Neal, Deion Jones, Austin Hooper, Devondre Campbell, and your first four picks, four starters, four borderline pro bowlers at times. That is a very, very good draft. The best draft we've had. 2017, Tack McKinley in the first. What a mistake that was. Um, Demonte Casey in the fifth was all right. Um, but he's not with the team anymore, so I guess not. 2018 was a good draft class, actually. Uh, I think Calvin Ridley in the first was good. Isaiah Oliver finally was coming into his own this year, although at the time you'd say it wasn't a good pick um, up until this season. So maybe it's not. Ito Smith in the fourth. Russell Gage and Foyasada Luwakon in the sixth round. F great value picks. Foyasada Luwakon is a borderline Pro Bowl player, so that's fantastic. 2019, outside of Chris Lindstrom, uh, all busts. Caleb McGarry's not good. Kendall Sheffield doesn't play. Nobody else really plays. 2020 is already looking like a pretty meh to bad draft class. AJ Terrell's turning out to be a great player. Marlon Davidson has lived up to nothing so far. Matt Hennessy has been... He's been all right. He's been all right. He's a subpar starter, I'd say. Michael Walker was fantastic as rookie year last year, but he's has hardly gotten on the field this year. Jalen Hawkins was actually playing pretty well up until he got injured this year. Um, and then we come to our 2021 draft class, which we will not talk about yet. Let's give these players a little bit of time. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But So you could see a lot of okay to bad draft classes, right? Not a lot of great picks, not a lot of good starters. It was either great starter or bust. There was no good depth. There was no player that can make a difference when needed. I mean, look at our first-round picks, right? Matt Ryan's great. Perry Jerry, bust. Sean Weatherspoon, bust. Julio Jones, great. Peter Kimes, no. Desmond Trufant, blah. Jake Matthews, good. Vic Beasley's bust. Keanu Neal, for a first-round pick, he's not on the team anymore. That's a bust. Taff McKinley's a bust. Calvin Ridley's not on the field right now for whatever. 
is going on in his life. Chris Lindstrom's been great, and AJ Terrell's been pretty good. But drafting-wise, we haven't been good. We haven't been good enough. We don't have, we've had, in the, in the last 12 years, we've had three superstar players. Players that have played out their rookie contracts, players that have played well in their second contracts. That's the biggest point I want to talk about. Matt Ryan, Julio Jones, and um, uh, Grady Jarrett have been fantastic throughout their Falcons careers. Now we're going to talk about players that played great in their rookie contracts, but got overpaid and fell off right away. That's the second biggest mistake. I would argue maybe at times even a bigger mistake that has put us in a cap hole. Players that played well, got paid, and never lived up to that expectation, right? And we're talking about players like Desmond Trufant. Played pretty well up until injuries started to hit at him a few years into his career. Got his got a big contract. Never lived up to it. Never lived up to it, right? How about Devontae Freeman? Played really well. One of the best running backs in the league. Uh, Super Bowl run 2017 was pretty good. Great player. Got paid and fell off a cliff. Fell off a cliff, and he's been bouncing around the league since. That was a terrible contract that put us in a bad cap situation. So them two contracts, at the, on the books at the same time, pretty much, by the way. Um, add on top of that, the newest problem that our team is facing, and Deion Jones. He's getting paid a lot of money. He's going to continue to get paid a lot of money, and he has regressed significantly over the last two seasons. He is a shadow of himself. He's afraid to hit. He can't cover very well. Is getting bodied by pretty much every big receiver or tight end that he's going up against. He's not been good. He's not been good. And Falcons fans are afraid to admit it because he's Debo. He's the guy because he got to pick the interception against the Saints. He's not that good anymore. Face it. He's not that good anymore. So he's getting overpaid as well. These three contracts already on their own are killing us. That is 8 15 I mean, that's $20 million plus in cap per year. Maybe a little bit more. Maybe closer to $30 million in cap over certain stretches that we are missing out on good players, right? That's the problem. That is a big problem. Thomas Dimitrov felt like he could just hand out contracts and push us right up against the cap every single year. And ever since the Super Bowl run, 2017 as well, if you want to include, we almost made it to the cha NFC Championship. Since then, terrible. We sacrificed depth for potential superstars and it killed us it killed us and we're reeling from it right now so draft wise haven't been good haven't been good i think falcons fans can agree with that we haven't been good we are not hitting on our late round picks to become decent depth players uh we haven't really found any too many too many hidden gems lately um and that's where we're looking at 2021 draft class kyle pitts is going to be a great player he couldn't have been drafted to a worse team he's getting double covered all the time he's got no receivers around him I mean, it's a sucky situation for him because he's he could probably be at 900 yards if it wasn't for Calvin Ridley stepping away and whatever's been going on, going on. Um, but for the Falcons, it's a good pick at this point in time because you could see we're already lacking receiving core. He's someone that'll be around for a long time when a new quarterback comes in in a few years. Um, Richie Grant doesn't get on the field enough. I mean, terrible pick at this point in time, you'd say, considering the players that were drafted after him, especially in the defensive end. Or, I mean, the, the the back end of the defense. Jalen Mayfield has been one of the worst uh, offensive linemen in the league. That's just, That already is a bad draft pick. I mean, you have to tackle to play guard. I'm not sure what the thinking was there. I'm, I'm really not. Um, Darren Hall has not been great. Drew Dahlman has been bad. I, and then the rest of the guys, although I will say, uh, Ade Ogundeji has been very good um, for a fifth-round pick. Hopefully he becomes a bit of a gem. Um, but you can see we haven't drafted well, right? Our contracts that we've given out to these players have not been good. And as a, as a result, it is affecting our third problem, which is signing marquee free agents. We have signed one big free agent in the last, I don't know, a long time. And that's Alex Mack. Alex Mack was the last great free agent we signed. And he was good for us. And obviously this season, we just picked up probably the best value free agency pick maybe in franchise history, and Cordero Patterson. The guy has been one of the best players in the league, period. Um, so perhaps that's a bit of a good turnaround that we're starting to see here um, with Atlanta. Um, we're finally, maybe, maybe Arthur Smith and Terry Fontenot are starting to figure out how to find value in free agency. But Thomas Dimitrov was not, couldn't, there was no worse 
GM for value in free agency than Thomas Dimitrov. Hardly ever filled this team up with great free agents. There was a period with Don Terry Poe, who was okay, was never great. Dwight Freeney was good, was never great. I mean, we lacked a lot. And the signings that he did make, oh my gosh, horrendous. I mean, our 2019-2020 offensive line was filled with ridiculously bad contracts. James Carpenter, Jamon Brown, players that we are still paying the price for. Tyler Davison is getting paid $5 million a year. I, Thomas Dimitrov was horrendous with free agency. He was he was one of the worst GMs probably in a very, probably in the NFL history when it comes to free agent signings. He was not good at all, and that's one of the main reasons why he's not going to be missed because he played with money. He was too free with money and free agency with the wrong players, and that's why we're in the cap hole that we're in today, right? So those three reasons are the reasons why we are not good. Can't draft. Don't know how to dish out money to the right players. That's why we are not good. And so that leads us to how is Arthur Smith and Terry Fontenot going to right this ship? And it's not by getting rid of Matt Ryan. Let's go to Spotrack, which is a um, salary cap thing, salary cap website, right? So let's take a look. So for 2021, we have some pretty big cap hits that look ugly, right? Dante Fowler Jr. is getting paid $10 million. That is a problem. Um, Caleb McGarry is getting a lot of money on his rookie deal. Tyler Davidson is getting a lot of money. Let's go to 2022 because there's nothing we can do about 2021, right? So let's look ahead to 2022. And that is where the problem comes from. Matt Ryan for a few years where he's getting paid almost $50 million. Can't cut him. He's got two more years, I think, on his contract. We've got to hold on to him. And make it work. Try to build a team around him that will succeed soon, right? I don't think the idea should be to build a team that can win now because that is the wrong idea. We just can't get that. But get something that will give Matt Ryan a chance before he's gone because I highly doubt he's getting another contract. Although there is a chance it might be a year extended. He might get extended to ease the cap hit from 48, something a little bit lower. You know, restructure the contract, give him another year. There's a chance that that's what happens. A lot of Falcons fans will not be happy with that, but I think it's probably what they're going to do because a $48 million cap hit is quite ridiculous. You can't build anything around that. It's going to be like this year where in 2021 where we signed a bunch of free agents off the street. I mean, a lot of Falcons fans are criticizing, um, or a lot of Falcons fans are saying, oh, but you know Terry Fontenot and Arthur Smith, they inherited Dan Quinn and Thomas Dimitrov's team. No, they didn't. They've made like 31 free agent signings. Like over half of this team is brand new, which of course does not work in Art Smith, Terry Fontano's favor regardless. But the point is, is this is, uh, there's a lot of turnover in this team this past off season. And there's going to be even, there might even be even more turnover for next season. So don't buy any players jerseys. That's the point I'm saying, because these players are going to be in and out. So we're looking at next season's uh, cap hits. Matt Ryan's getting paid too much. Grady Jarrett's getting paid a lot. But we take a look at Grady Jarrett's contract. I think it's just one or two more years. Um, Unfortunately, my internet's not good. So we'll look at others for now. Jake Matthews is getting paid too much. Jake Matthews is getting paid too much. So Grady Jarrett's got one more year on his deal. Um, Just live through it, Atlanta. Don't cut Grady Jarrett. People are talking about cutting Grady Jarrett. Are Are you insane? Let's take his last year of his deal, and maybe he'll be a bit loyal to you in his next contract, right? Um, he is not a $23, $25 million player. You know, we can get a contract extension for him after that, maybe three years for 35 maybe. That'll be worth it. But that's a that's a big hit, but it's worth it. He's, he's that good of a player. He's been that good for us. Jake Matthews getting paid way too, way too much. Jake Matthews is getting paid way too much. I think we've got two more years with him, unfortunately. Um... Yeah, so we've got two more years with him where he's getting paid a lot of money. $12 million, $14 million, but that cap hit goes up to 23 and $22 million. If there's an out, which I don't think there... I don't know if there will be an out. Uh, maybe before 2023, take eat the $8 mil. Um, He's getting paid too much money. Um, that was a bad contract extension for a player that is average. Deion Jones is getting paid way too much money. He needs... He's He is a cut candidate. He is a cut candidate. For this offseason. 
Um, no, he's not a cut for all this offseason. I'm stupid because that's $24 million in dead cap. We're not doing that. He might be cut for 2023, so we might have one more year of Deion Jones and then cut him before he gets a really um, – before he gets, that would be 17 mil, be a 5 mil dead cap hit if we cut him before 2023. I think that makes the most sense. Deion Jones should be cut this offseason, but he's not going to because the dead cap is simply too high. So that's not happening. Um, the whole situation with Calvin Ridley is kind of whatever. It's kind of weird. Who knows what's going on with him nowadays? Um, who knows if he's going to come back? But he's, got, he's getting paid a lot of money. So at this point, it looks like they picked up the extension. I highly doubt after next year he's going to stick around unless he offers to get paid less than $10 mil a year. Because he, as of right now, based on what we saw from him this season, he's not a $10 mil a year player. Um, Tyler Davidson's getting paid too much. Get rid of him. That's $5 million. That's ridiculous. Dante Fowler's going to get cut for sure before his next uh, contract gets kicked in. So we're going to have a little bit of money, probably about $30 mil, a little over $30 mil in cap space for next season maybe. Um, Caleb McGarry should get cut. If I'm being honest, Caleb McGarry should get cut. Three million is a lot of money. Um, Mike Davis is probably going to get cut. And the rest of these guys are like a million, a million, a million, a million. Uh, we're completely lacking depth on this team. That's pretty much what it is. They're projecting, I mean, we've got 15 million in dead cap from Julio Jones for next season. The point of the matter, before I get too whatever into this, the point of the matter is... We have to make some tough decisions. We need to draft well. And we look at some of the players that are available in this upcoming draft. Let's go to my favorite website, Tankathon, so I can see who the Falcons are drafting. Right now, we have the eighth overall pick. Looking at our schedule, um, we have five tough... We have, we have some tough games. We have some easy games. Easy games for Atlanta. Not easy. So Buffalo and San Francisco... Are probably losses. San Francisco's playing really well right now. Just lost to Seattle, though, so maybe not. I don't know. I think these five games are pretty much winnable. The Bills are inconsistent. 49ers, I guess, are inconsistent. Lions have one win on the season. Panthers don't look good at all. New Orleans doesn't look good at all. Should beat the Panthers. Should beat the Saints. Should beat the Lions. Right? That's three wins. I think even for our Falcons, that's three winnable games. So that would put us at eight and seven. Question is, is the Bills and the 49ers, we have to win one of those games to have a shot at the playoffs, I think. So we beat the 49ers, lose to the Bills, that could get us in. Beat the Bills, lose to the 49ers, that could get us in. But if we lose to both the Bills and the 49ers, we have no wiggle room for anything. We're out of the playoffs. Um, so I think we're probably going to finish uh, about, I, I think we've, I think between, realistically here, Lions, Panthers, Saints, I think we lose to one of them, and we lose to 49ers and Bills. So we probably go 2-3. and three. So we're probably going to finish 7-10. Seven 7-10 and, ten. Seven and ten is probably going to put us around pick 9-ish. Pick nine, pick ten, maybe. Um, and then we look at players that we could draft. And it's clear what our biggest needs are. We have no pass rush. We need an edge rusher. We failed with Vic Beasley. We failed with Tack McKinley. We need to hit on this pick. So, uh, Kayvon Thibodeau is not going to be available. Aiden Hutchinson is not going to be available whatsoever. The first player that probably pops up into the mind as an edge rusher is George Karloftis. We'll see about that. That's probably the first edge rusher that we can really look at for a while. I think Drake Jackson is a little too far down the board for us. Um, of course, you have interior defensive linemen that maybe you can move around a little bit. Guys like DeMorgan Leal. Um, Jordan Davis, a lot of Falcons fans like because he's from Georgia. I don't know about that. Um, there's there's not a lot of edge talent in the mid first round. So this is, might be a trade back situation. Try to pick up some extra picks. But it's clear that in the first round, we need to address the edge. That's the biggest need of this team. That or you go interior offensive line with a guard. Or you go right tackle. It's one of those. That's what you have to pick in the first round. So that's what that is. Second round, this is where things open up a little bit, depending on what you pick in the first round. You can go D-line again. You can double up the D-line. Try to assure yourself that you're going to have a good pick in one of those players. Um, personally, for me, the biggest need of this team is a Running back. We need a running back. This is probably a good place to draft somebody like Kenneth Walker from Michigan State. That's my favorite running back coming out of this draft. This could be a pick for Brees Hall, perhaps even. Um, that might be a little bit early for him, but I think he's a decent running back as well. 
we need a running back. That's pretty much what it is. And you have to draft one. You can't get one out of free agency nowadays. You have to pick one up uh, in the draft. And we, we need to hit on it because we haven't had a great running back in a while. We need somebody who's going to get us over 1,000 yards. And we might not have the money for Cordero Patterson. He might want six, seven million dollars over uh, for two years. He might want a fourteen million dollar contract, fifteen million dollar contract over a two year span. We're not going to be able to afford that. So we're going to need another running back. I think that's more important than a receiver. But um, we could also go wide receiver here. I like George Pickens. He was hurt for the whole year. I want him. If he falls to the third, pick him up, please. Pick him up. And then as you get further into the draft, I think the positions we need to focus on are the edge for sure. I think we edge outside linebackers. Edge outside linebackers. Corners. We need somebody good to partner A.J. Terrell. A lot of people want uh, Ahmad Gardner, Sauce Gardner from Cincinnati. That'd be nice, but unless we trade back, that's probably not going to happen. Or trade back into the first, that's not going to happen. So we need to draft edge. It's the most important need. I'd argue our second biggest need is offensive line. Um, in the interior so i'd say but i wouldn't go too heavy on it not a lot of picks put into it just one give it get a, a first or second into the interior offensive line i think that'll be good enough um and the rest of the draft has to be addressed positions need edge interior offensive line running back must two running backs i draft in like the second and fourth second and fifth receiver we need a receiver. We need at least one receiver in the draft. Get another one out of free agency that's not too bad on a value deal. We see how good that can be um, at times. I'd like another inside linebacker to kind of usurp Deion Jones to take his position. We are not. We might not even be able to afford Foyasad or Lilikon this offseason. So that's going to be a big position I need. That's going to be a, a hole that, fills up, that, that opens up out of nowhere. So we're going to need an inside linebacker. So we need edge, inside linebacker, outside linebacker, a corner. I think safety is an odd position right now. We've got Deron Harmon and Eric Harris starting there. Neither one of them are particularly good, but we've got Jalen Watkins and Richie Grant, two player, two young players who could potentially fill those positions next season. I'd like to see that. I'd like to see Richie Grant run a free safety, Jalen Hawkins running strong safety. Just try it out, see what happens. Maybe you pick one up in free agency, pick another one or two up in free agency to fill those gaps. We need a corner, and that's about it. I think tight end, we're good. I think um, I think tackles were okay. Caleb McGarry, if we have to, I don't think he's the end-all, be-all if we have to have him for next season. Um, I mean, we, we have needs everywhere, but we need an early-round edge rusher. We need a top-two-round offensive lineman. And we need depth in running back and receiver that are going to fill those gaps. That's how the Falcons get better, in my opinion. Don't need a quarterback this year. Won't need a quarterback next year. We can't get a quarterback, and, and we're never going to cut Matt Ryan. Let's get that straight. So Matt Ryan's sticking around for at least three more seasons, I think. So get comfortable. Get used to it. That's just how it is. And for that, we need a great offensive line because this guy's going to move less and less every year, right? That's the deal with that. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. I haven't uploaded Falcon stuff in a long time. This is more like an off-season type thing, but I'm interested in seeing what you guys have to say. So take care and peace.